Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you how I made Abyss 16x. So what I did was I took the sword and I changed all the shape and I changed it to make it how I wanted it to be. And then what I did was I took two colors, a red and a slightly different hue, darker red, and I made a gradient. And then I started using certain tools which I've shown in my pack making tutorials to make darker and lighter parts in the shading of the sword. So as you can see here, I am making the right side a bit darker, and here I'm making the left side a bit lighter with curves. So now I'm going to be doing the cross guard, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to reshade it with a new gradient, and then I'm going to create an outline, and I'm just deleting the parts of the outline. And now I'm doing one side, and then I'm going to copy that side to the other side. There we go. And then I'm going to make it a bit darker, because it was a bit too bright. So now I'm doing the pommel, and yes, that's actually what it's called. And now I'm finally doing the handle. And I was trying out with a bunch of different things here, making it red, and then I tried making it a bit darker, tried making both sides dark. It didn't, wasn't really working for me, so I decided in the end to just make it black and white. All right, so now the sword is done. This isn't the final one you see in the pack because I slightly edit the shape of it, but that's how I shaded it anyway. So now we're onto the tools. Here, I'm not going to talk too much over it. Very similar process to the sword, and uh, enjoy. Alright, so here we are on the shovel, and I'm messing around here, trying to see what looks nice, and I decide that making the inside the darker part, so I do that, and then I make a little line through the center, and that looks pretty nice to me. And finally, I've decided to use the exact same shape, because I really like the shape for the shovel, and that's what I'm doing for this. Same sort of shading with the sword, just making the right side darker and the left side brighter. All right, so what I'm doing right now is I'm taking the part of the handle from the sword and I'm copying it over to all the tools. And this is to keep consistency throughout the pack. And right now I'm creating a little bit of a glint on the cross guard and I'm gonna add it to each of the tools. All right, so here what I'm doing is I'm taking the 1.14 diamond and I'm adding a little bit of a gradient overlay and then just making it a bit brighter. And this is just to make sure it's red and is consistent with the rest of the pack. All right, so now I'm gonna start making some of the armor and this drove me crazy. I was trying to find a shape. I was trying to work out how to make the original 1.8 shape because this shape was from 1.14 and it was driving me crazy. So what I ended up doing is I tabbed out and I went to Google and I found a diamond chest plate shape and I just used that because otherwise I would have spent ages trying to work out how to make the chest plate shape. And then I spent quite a while trying to shade it too. It was quite difficult. Um, I don't really like making chest plates. They're quite a difficult thing to make. This probably looks good already, but as you can see, I spend quite a while on this. All right, so I finally finished this thing. I decided to just make it a really simple outline and make it a bit brighter with curves. And there we go, that's good enough for me. So now I'm opening up the rest of the armor files and I'm gonna quickly make these because I'm fed up because I've spent too much time making that bloody chest plate. So here we are. Here's the leggings. I just make a simple bevel outline and it looks pretty nice. And then I just do the exact same thing with the helmet and it also looks pretty good. And finally, I made the boots, which I did a pretty similar thing with. And I tried doing a few different things, but I ended up just keeping the same original design. All right, so here we are on the ender pearl. I originally just used the same shape and then make an outline, make it dark and then make another outline. And so I get to this point and I'm starting to think, what should I do? 
So I zoom in and out. And then I try to make this thing in the center, which looks all right. Uh, you'll see. Mm, should be a bit darker. So I make it a bit darker. And then I try to make a little bit of a brighter bevel sort of thing. And then I kind of undo it all because I'm not really happy with how it looks. So I decided just to start again and I'm adding a bit more contrast here. And now I'm making sure there are no transparent pixels on the outline. I tried making a twist prowl, which I might try to do in another pack, but in 16x it's really difficult to make look right. So I kind of just give up on that. And so I come back here and I try to do a really old thing I used to do, which is where you make the bottom dark and it to like fade in. And then you make the exact same thing, but opposite, brighter on the top. And then I finally just decided to go over this because I thought it looked pretty good. All right, so here we have the rod and I'm just using the 1.14 shape here. And I tried making an edit to the shape, but I realized that it really didn't look very good. So what I did is I took the, the, um, the handle from the tools and then I put that onto it and I changed the shape around on the, uh, the string there, made it a bit shorter. And then I took my colors and I added them in. As you can see here, I think it looks pretty cool. And I added a bit more contrast on that gradient there. And then I doubled up this highlight here. And then finally I fixed the gradient on the string. I tried making a darker string, but it really didn't look so good. So I just ended up making it bright again. All right, so finally the time to get on with the bow. And this was probably my favorite part of the pack. And I kind of took a break here and I came back and I started work on the bow. And I used this uh, layout that is given in the pack community discord, which I will link below. And they have a bunch of shapes for bows and I decided to use this one. So what I did was I started shading it. I made a little gray gradient and then I added an outline. And I thought that looked pretty good. And then I decided I should add little bits of red. So I took the same ones from my sword and I added them on with the same colors. And I think that adds a lot to it. And I think that looks really nice. So I took my completed side and I copied it over. And then what I did was I came to the center and I did a little bit of a gradient. And then I did the string there. And so now I've got to make the animation. So I copy it on and then I've got to make the arrow. And then for some other reason, I decided to start editing the armor because I realized that it needs more black in it for some reason. So that's what I start doing here. Anyway, let's get back to the bow. So what I do here is I go to my new bow layer, which is the bow pulling underscore zero. And I make the bottom part transparent so that I know how much I need to pull each of the arrows. And I suddenly realize I don't have an arrow, so I have to quickly make one here. So I just copy my tool actually again, and I use that to make the arrow. So I add a little bit on the top, and I make the inside a bit brighter. And I tried making the inside red, but I decided that didn't really look right. So I made it all black and white again. All right, so coming to the finish of the arrow, I tried putting something at the bottom like a feather, but it didn't really look very nice. So I ended up just getting rid of it. So I copy it over to the bow and I start creating the string animations. So here I am on bow underscore pulling underscore zero. And there we go. I am just creating the string basically and moving it back every single animation frame. And it looks pretty good. And I redo the string, making sure that the gradient is still uh, correct. And so I think that looks pretty good. And I slightly moved the uh, end of the bow there just to see if that looks any better. And that's how I finished the bow. All right, so here we are. We are on the apple now. And what I was going to originally do was make the arrow apple red. And this is because uh, I'm usually making gold golden apples. And I see a lot of people make the golden apples the same color as their uh, texture pack. But I thought that looked a bit weird when I was trying it. So I, right here, I'm changing it to yellow. And then I'm using color balance and glow to try and make it look a bit better so color balance i'm adding a bit of red and making it a bit more yellow and that color there looks pretty cool to me so i decided to use that so i made a red apple here too so now finally onto the buckets the buckets are probably the hardest part of the texture pack for me i hate making buckets i'm so bad at them but i try my best to i'm using the 1.14 shape and kind of just trying to shade it and make it look simple and nice so I'm adding a bit more contrast here. I'm making a new layer and I'm going to make it darker. And then I'm going to use the erase tool to make the brighter parts because the lighter part is on the bottom layer.
So I've finally given up on trying to make the buckets look better. So I'm now copying them over and making the milk bucket. Now the empty bucket. So I'm trying a few things here, try and see what it looks nice. End up just reshading it. And then I realized I kind of want a bit more contrast. So I select everything and make it a bit darker. Like that, there we go. And then I copy that back over to the other ones. And I'm trying out a few different things here, see what looks good. And finally, I add a bit of a drip here, which looks kind of cool, I guess. And then I make the lava bucket. And there's a plugin in paint.net called Flames, which lets you create it, make it look like lava. So that's what I do here. And I think it looks pretty good. All right, so here we are for the particles. And I try out a few different things. It's 16 X, so there really aren't that many things you can do for particles. So I'm just messing with the shape and trying a few things. And I think I finally decided to use this shape. So I copy it over for both. And then I make a red and a black version of the particles. And then I reshade that heart and I reshade the uh, little rod thing. And I think that looks pretty good. And then we come over to the icons and now I'm trying to make a different shaped heart. Just trying to see how that looks. And this I spent quite a while on. Hearts are really important to me to make sure they try and look nice. And uh, I think it looked all right, but I kind of didn't like it near the end. So I ended up just changing it back to how it normally was. So here I am redoing it just because I didn't really like what I was doing with the last version. So this is just the vanilla shape and I'm trying to make a red heart here. Red is quite a hard color to work with because making it brighter looks a bit weird. But I think I'm pretty happy with the outcome, so I just leave it like that. So here I am making the XP bar. I go for a di couple different styles and I ended up choosing this one. And I kind of guessed at the length these should be, so I went halfway across, copied it over, and realized I accidentally made it perfect size, which was pretty cool. So then I go through a few stages of color correction and stuff, and then I copy it over make it black and white, darken it, and then copy that down to all different layers. And now I'm coming down here to fix up some of these because I think it doesn't look that great. So I make the bottom a bit darker to give it a bit more contrast and I copy that over again. So now what I'm doing is adjusting what I made originally and now I'm making the background of these which is basically making them black and white and make them darker and then put the whites and red outlines on them where they need to go. And so now what I'm doing here is recoloring all of them I'm making them black and white, making a new layer, putting the color and then doing overlay. Here for the saturation ones I do the exact same thing and then I go to color balance and I make it slightly more red as you can see which makes it a bit more bit less green which is kind of like a really bad thing to have on your yellow and finally here are the wither bars and and then I make the horse ones because that one time someone uses a horse in Minecraft it will look great And here are the hunger bars. I'm just using the default shape and then shading it. And here they are. This pretty much the same way as I did with a quarry. All right, so now I finally finished with the icons. I'm moving over to do the widgets. And this is like your selector bar and then all your buttons on the options menus. And so I'm taking my quarry version. I'm just making it simplified making the uh, each selection a bit bigger and making it slightly more transparent. And then I'm gonna reshade the selector, make it a bit darker. Then I'm gonna do the exact same method to the selection bars because I think it looks pretty good like this.
So I'm just coming now to fix up some of these little internet connection bars and they take quite a while to do because they're quite difficult as you can see here. I'm gonna copy some stuff over and try and make it fit. It's a bit tedious, but it works, I guess. And finally, here we are with the armor, which I think is pretty self-explanatory what I'm doing. I'm making a gradient for each layer, and then I'm gonna make a bunch of outlines, and then use the eraser tool to make um, more fades with the outlines and stuff like that. Not talking much through this since it should all be pretty self-explanatory. I'm now using the eraser tool over the outlines to give them a bit more of a fade, deleting some parts, and here I'm making the fade. All right, I'm pretty much getting done with the armor now. I'm deciding to make the leggings and the dark parts here. I'm copying over the shoulders and now I've just got to copy over all these parts. And then I'm going to do a little bit of color correction to make sure my colors are correct. And here I am copying over the leggings and making the dark part there. And making the little uh, shoulder pads. So I copy that over, copy this over. And that is it. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you're interested in making texture packs, make sure to join my Discord. Got a lot of people there that will help you critique your textures and help you make them better. So if you're interested in joining that, you should do. There's a link in the description. As well, you should follow my Twitter because I have a bunch of sneak peeks and stuff. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. This took quite a while to make. Goodbye.